Morning Exercises, May 14th. I will cause you to pass under the rod. Ezekiel 20:37. Three things in the scripture go by this name. A father's scourge, a king's scepter, and a shepherd's crook. All these will apply in the present instance, and all of them are necessary to do some justice to the subject. There is a paternal rod. Thus we read, He that spareth the rod hateth his son. I will visit their transgressions with a rod, and their iniquities with stripes. There can be no mistake here. The idea is correction, and the rod means the instrument with which the father chastises. God is a father, and he has a rod. This rod is made up of any kind of affliction, outward troubles, bodily pains, family bereavements. Even men, wicked men, reproaching and injuring us, and undeservedly too, as to them, may be God's scourge to make us suffer. Thus he said of the Assyrian, O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. I will send him against a hypocritical nation, and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge, to take the spoil, and to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Our friends, our children, our dearest comforts in life, if needs be, God can make the means of chastising us. Who comes not under this rod? As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. They are not all exercised in the same way. But what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? And who, painful as the exercise may be, cannot acknowledge in the review if not in the enduring, it is good for me that I have been afflicted. And as they are useful in our progress in the divine life, so they have frequently been the means of first awakening the desire. Where is God, my Maker, who giveth songs in the night? The failure of the human arm has led to a dependence on the divine. The desolations of earth have said to purpose, Arise and depart hence, for this is not your rest. What sent the prodigal home? He began to be in want. What brought Manasseh to repentance? In his affliction he sought the Lord God of his father. Father, I bless thy gentle hand. How kind was thy chaste rod that forced my conscience to a stand and brought my wandering soul to God. There is a regal rod, so we call a scepter, of the Messiah, the King, on his holy hill of Zion, it is said, he shall rule them with a rod of iron. But this refers to his adversaries. He has another kind of rod for his subjects. The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. And what was sent out of Zion but the gospel? The gospel, therefore, is his rod, and this rod is his scepter and the emblem of his authority, displaying his majesty and maintaining his rule. Hence it is added, Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies, meaning over his subjects those surrounded with foes, for they are brought under his sway and feel and acknowledge their subjection. It therefore follows, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Though once they said, Who is the Lord? And we will not have him to reign over us. They are all brought under the rod of his strength. The gospel has come to them not in word only, but in power. It has awakened their consciences. It has changed their dispositions. 
it has made them submit to the righteousness which is of God, and to yield themselves to his service as those who are alive from the dead. They were the servants of sin, but they now obey from the heart the form of doctrine which was delivered to them. There is a pastoral rod. Of this David speaks when addressing the Lord as his shepherd, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This refers to the crook with which the shepherd both walks as he follows and uses as he manages the sheep. It is the symbol and instrument of his charge and office. The people of God are naturally like lost sheep going astray, wandering upon the mountains of bareness and danger. He seeks them and finds them out, and brings them all under his rod. And happy they who are under his care. He is their shepherd, and they shall not want. He will make them to lie down in green pastures. He will feed them beside the still waters. He will restore their souls, and lead them in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He will gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. And the privilege commenced in grace will be continued and completed in glory. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes.